Okay. All right. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the September 20th, 2023 meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Fea if you must leave the call by using the team's chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Fea, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Dominowski. Uh, Ms. Dominowski? Here. Mr. McMillian? Here. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Ms. Hen? Here. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Tantliff? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fay. I think that takes care of the staff members as well participating. So we can move on to our first agenda item, which was um, to discuss the purpose of the budget committee. And um, do I need to take control to put that up or is, is it already up there? Hold on a second. I need to go, up. I need to go back to my. Um, I can share my screen. That'd be great. Thank you. So this committee was formed in 2021. And I believe, Ms. Hen, these are, um, is this something that you guys put together? They are, Ms. Dominowski, thank you. Um, I provided for the committee's review the original motion um, establishing the board budget committee that talks about the necessity, um, just the rationale for establishing it, as well as the draft goals. Um, both of which the committee approved at that time. Um, February 21, the original motion, and April 21, the draft goals. So is this just something that we need to agree on now as a newly formed committee I, members, or was this ever brought before um, the full board for, does, does it need to be brought before the full board for approval? Kind of like um, I know that the legislative committee did uh at the end of the school year last this year right the legislative priorities were voted on by the full board however other committee in internal goals are typically not brought to the full board um for example the audit committee um approved its own contract and working rules that did not come before the full board um so i don't believe this would need to come before the full board based on that precedent do you want me or do you want to read all of this aloud for the record or should we um I, I feel I'm wondering if we should table this until Ms. Brooker Dryer's on, on yours. I know she wanted to be part of this. When if we want to come back to this before we decide to move on. Does that and also with the next agenda item about um doing what we setting agendas for future meetings? Um we might want to wait for her to to what do you what do you think? <laughs> That that's fine. I unless the we need a formal motion, I'm I'm okay with coming back to this item if Mr. McMillian is. Mr. McMillian, yes, how do you yes, feel? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Ms. Yes. <laughs> Dubinowski, can I say something real quickly? Yes. Uh, there was a motion that was brought to the board in back before this one passed. And I'm gonna be real transparent. I voted against this committee the first time. And then the second time, I'm not sure of the timeline, Ms. Ms. Hen might know that better than I do. But then the more that I was involved with the board, the more that I saw the need for this. So then when it came around the second time, I voted for it. And, and I strongly believe that this is, is a committee that the, the board members need and also the community members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, yes. Um, so I'm wondering if we don't mind, we're gonna do our um, this in reverse and start with Mr. Tantliff's adopted budget presentation and then 
and we'll come back to this when Miss Booker Dwyer comes on because I'm, I'm I know she probably would like to be a part of this conversation and she is going to be here as far as I know as soon as she can sounds good okay so moving on to the next one which was um nope that's the wrong one okay mr tentleff please present the overview of the fiscal year 2024 adopted budget all righty thank you um <clears throat> Uh, so uh, what I'm going to go through here is um, a roll up of all the different initiatives that were proposed first by the superintendent, then approved and added upon by the board. And then uh, you can we'll compare that to the county adopted budget. So really, I'll be focusing on the difference between the two. <clears throat> to show you um, the delta that occurred at the end of the budget cycle. So I'm a, we can go through anything uh, you'd like. And if you have a budget book, this is um, the chart like this isn't in the budget book, but on page, hold on, let me just tell you the page just so you'll know. I mean, we, you know, this was in board docs. But just so you know, it mirrors the roll up on page 22 and 23 of the adopted budget book. Because that's where we summarize all the initiatives. <clears throat> um, OK, so just uh, starting from the top watershed, we just trued up their enrollment. This is all in. Uh, this is actual dollars, so this was just a little tweak. Um, Pre-K uh, paras, we had requested 104. The CE proposed a three-year phase-in plan, so he approved 41. Uh, and this is a blueprint mandate where we're converting all the kindergarten assistants to para educators, and that is mandated. Uh, by law. Uh, we actually did convert everyone this year. The remaining uh, 63 were picked up by the ESSER budget this year, uh, and then we'll phase in the rest of them next year. Uh, English learners were left intact. The APs were left intact. <clears throat> the concentration of poverty uh, grant got cut, but uh, that was just due to MSD giving us a revised uh, projection for COP. So that this was not a decision by the council. This was our staff making adjustments to the COP grant based on uh, MSD reducing our seat concentration of poverty budget between uh, the January initial release of revenue and uh, the updated release we had prior to the budget being adopted. Uh, workforce <clears throat> development. Actually, this is not a dollar change. Uh, it was just a movement of where the dollars are planned. And um, as a reminder, this was a blueprint mandated program uh, which totals uh, about $6.8 million. We had to self fund this. And it's money that supports workforce development and is it's co managed between our CTE department and the county's workforce development uh, folks. <clears throat> they came to an agreement on a budget which got approved by MSDE and then we uh, pass the money to them, their portion of it that they're spending, which is about 80% of the bucket. Um, but all the final details of this particular uh, grant are still being, not the budget itself, but how the money's handled, uh, that's still being smoothed out. But you can see it's a big bucket. <clears throat> Athletic trainers, Mr. McMillian's 
uh, dear and near to his heart. Uh, the CE funded half of them, 13 of the 25. <clears throat> and we expect that he'll fund the second half. So 13, there's 12 plus a supervisor. And the other 12 we expect will be funded in the FY25 budget. Um, then if you recall, uh, the deputy superintendent, now the superintendent um, kind of led an effort to see where we could reduce existing uh, expenses from the proposed budget to help fund a little over a 2% COLA. Uh, most of the unions actually got restructured scale, but it was the equivalent of a little over a 2% COLA and step. So that's what some of these negatives are. Again, not the council cutting, but us cutting. So we reduced by 21 vacant central office positions. Um, here's the 26 million to fund uh, additional COLA. We had a step in there already. Turnover adjustment, uh, basically just tweak that number uh, downward to get to where we needed to be. Kelly Services, uh, you may recall uh, at one point we were going to, we, we took on Kelly last year uh, and to save money in the budget uh, proposal we were going to, or the proposal as it went to the CE, we were going to get rid of the Kelly contract, bring it back in house but they agreed to reductions in their contract costs. Plus we were a little under budget. So we were able to get $2 million there. Um, benefit costs were just an adjustment based on um, all the staff changes above that I mentioned. The reductions translated down to benefit reductions. Um, we had one planned transportation mechanic that also went away to help fund the compensation. Uh, this group down here, the classroom display panels, uh, utilities. Well, uh, utilities were built-ins. Uh, we believe we found some room in there to reduce that just due to the volatility in energy prices. Discretionary budgets were about a 5% cut to uh, the central office budgets. That's about what it equaled to. And uh, at the 11th hour, the county council decided to cut our uh, budget by a half million dollars. So we uh, went ahead and did that in the budget. Um, so that's really it in a nutshell. This is just a roll up of, ever, of the changes. Um, and that's really the adjustments that the board uh, made. I'm happy to take any questions. Not the board, the council made to the board's proposal. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. Um, Julie, Mr. Hen, did you have a question? I did. Thank you. And good evening. And thank you, Mr. Tantliff, um, for providing this. Um, I had this agenda item be added because of how helpful your presentation was last year. So thank you for um, for updating this for us. Sure. My, my question has to do with the changes that were made last year to fund certain items with ESSER funds. And they showed on the spreadsheet as reductions, but actually the CE funded them with ESSER. Um, was that not the case this year or are those rolled into um, what's being shown here in terms of the general fund regardless of funding source? Um, well, first, let me, uh, I'm trying I'm trying to recall, could, could you mind saying what you think this, or what, what you indicated the CE did last year just so I can get yeah, calibrated on, on what you're referring to? Sure, when we looked at the changes between the board re request and the county adopted last year, uh -huh. there were some um, line items shown as reductions that were actually funded with ESSER funds. Um, okay, instead. I got you. And so I was wondering if that was the case this year or 
are those are they rolled into what we're looking at or is that a different um sure report? no i think i'm with you um so over the last couple years there were certain uh you know we had all the covid money started cares grant became you know sr one two and three there were several initiatives that the board proposed that the ce didn't fund in the general fund but told us to go ahead and fund it uh using esser money um there was nothing like that this year uh and actually you know esser will be sunsetting at the end of this fiscal year so uh there's no new big initiatives on that and nothing there's nothing that the board proposed that the ce removed and said go ahead and add that back in or us deciding that we'd go ahead and add it back in using esser but you can see that there weren't really um well actually the only thing i'd say uh miss hen mm -hmm. the paras the 104 kindergarten paras uh -huh. that one initiative we did we were able to for fy24 to pick up the other 63 that the CE didn't fund to allow it. We could have phased in the classroom conversion, uh, but we really wanted to get it all done this year. And by using some available ESSER funds, we internally decided to do it. The CE said, hey, you can, I'll give you a third, a little over the third of the money this year. But then we internally decided, hey, we have some flex on ESSER. Uh, this would be a good use uh of the money to to get that program up and running that was the only initiative in that uh category i think okay thank you and if we could use the example say of the additional 15 minutes i believe that sure. was of the school day i think that was if memory serves me correctly um i think that was one of the items that the ce said go ahead but use esser funds mm -hmm. support is it an accurate statement to say that those are now that line items now being funded through the general fund and becomes part of maintenance of effort so we don't have to worry about the sun setting and then it's been rolled into what we can expect to receive each year no so we have not generally in, uh, pulled back the esser funded initiatives into the general fund because the esser funding goes through fy 2024 so right. the funding cliff uh we have significantly driven by pulling those f esser initiatives back in the largest one uh to your point being the 15 minutes uh extra in the school day mm -hmm. that will be an fy 25 challenge gotcha and anything else that's an esser that we feel must be uh carry forward and can't be sunsetted will need to be uh, funded next year. Okay, thank you. So is is there somewhere the board can um, reference a list of those um, expenditures in the FY24 current adopted budget that we are using ESSER funds for so that we know what, and I have an older version of this that you provided, but I'm mm -hmm. looking at the current um, listing to know exactly what our um, I'm going to use the term liability and I don't mean that literally, but what are we looking sure. at specifically? So you, you uh, let me just restate that you would like to see a list of initiatives currently funded on the ESSER grant that we believe will need to be carried forward next year. We may change our minds as the process gets further into it, but as of today, uh, what do we think needs to be carried over into next year? Is that your question, Ms. Hen? Yes, sir. Exactly. Um, I believe we can pull that information together. Thank you. Ms. Domanowski, do we need a motion from the committee to make that request, or is that something you could facilitate for us? Uh, yeah, I, I've uh, actually, I was going to say something a little bit larger too. To that, 
if you want to make that motion, but I also because we're talking about how do we make the budget more transparent is something like this that you you're presenting to us now. Is this something that um, is available or can be made available publicly, you know, in our on our budget website so that, um, you know, we can be accountable to our. Be transparent about how we're spending our money and how, you know, that we're doing as we said we would do when we pass the budget every year. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, this is posted. Well, there's two two things. Um, I mentioned the budget book page that uh, the by goals summer. It's not showing the change from beginning to end, but it's showing all of the budgeted initiatives. Um, and and of course, there's an electronic copy of the budget book uh, on our website. And this is now posted in board docs uh, so the public can see it. But we can. We can post this document on the budget landing page along with the other FY24 uh, budget documents uh, if you wish. That would not be difficult at all. That would so be the only great. difference versus the budget book is it just shows board to county and the total change. Right. I, I mean, it doesn't, just saying like even if we could do it quarterly, um, I, I'll, I'll and I will facilitate that and add everyone on the budget committee on that email just as a reminder just to put it in writing um, this and then all the things that are currently being funded through us or that um, we're going to. You know, possibly need to hold on to or, or just whatever we're whatever money we're using from ESSER to fund. You know, like the, the extra 15 minutes um, so we know what's going to be sunsetting in about a year. And if we're going to need to find money or if we still need those. So yes, I will follow up on that. Those two things and send that email. Um, Ms. Hen, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Sure. I, I'm going to make sure. So I'm sure Mr. Tantliff and staff are already ahead of us by, yeah. by a month, but um, it would be helpful to have transparency. And I agree with the goal of making it available to the public. There are some other um, LEA. LEA websites that I've seen that have um, had a page just for ESSER um, spending in, in full transparency. And I think the state has one as well. So I know we're coming to that um, as an agenda topic, but I think the more we can put out there, the better towards that goal. So thank you for facilitating that. And thank you, Mr. Tantliff, for, for your support. Sure. Uh, Mr. McMillian, did you have any questions? Yes, I do. Just briefly, uh, it's more of a statement than anything else. Mr. Tantliff, and I think it's extremely interesting when athletics brought the presentation to the board about athletic trainers, their initial request was 12. Um, so then I, you know, I've made the motion, we passed it. Uh, it's added that, you know, all 24 high schools would have a trainer for this coming school year. It's passed, it, it goes through the process, and then I get a call from me, and I don't know if I'm saying it, Dr. Jennifer Lynch calls me and says, Mr. McMillian, uh, you know, the, the trainers were cut in half. And what I find interesting about this is it goes right back, that's exactly what was initially presented. Uh, so, you know, I'm not questioning whether he cut it or not, but it, it just looks to me like, you know, they asked for 12, we vote and we say 24, and then they end up with 12. So they got what they wanted. And, you know, whether that was, I don't know, it's it just the optics of it don't look good to me, you know, and maybe that's just me. But it's it just, you know, the optics appears that there was conversation there between, you know, the county executive and central staff for athletics and said, well, we, you know, we asked for 12. And, uh, you know, Mr. McLean said 24, but, you know, we're, we're happy with 12. So. So that's not really a question. That's just an observation and a statement from me. Thank you very much for listening to me. Always happy to listen to you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thanks. So how do I mean how like, that's a good point though. How how does that work as far as like the board passes, we say what we want, and yeah, then it has to go to the county, you have to ask for it, but why wouldn't we be included in as a whole instead of having, you know, Dr. Lynch calling Mr. McMillian saying, hey, this is what actually happened. Like, I didn't realize that until he just said that. Is, is, there, well, is there a problem? 
I think that was probably a courtesy from Dr. Lynch, but the the process is after the board passes the budget and, and they're asking questions before that. Um, the the uh, fiscal folks over in the county, uh, you know, they only have a certain amount of money available. So once we pass the budget, it's dependent on some assumptions uh, on an amount of county funding. And this year we, we contributed uh, a lot by reducing our budget. And so uh, I think the county exec was favorable to pretty much leaving everything in that we proposed. But um, all we can do is answer their questions, give them feedback on the impact of anything we've proposed, whether the board added it or it was in the superintendent's proposal. Um, there's a lot of back and forth. We have a lot of questions. They have a lot of questions. We answer everything we can. Uh, and then it's sort of out of our hands. In the end, the county executive's working with his staff. We ask for a certain amount of money. Um, they think X amount is available and uh, they determine how to make all of that fit into the budget. That's just kind of the way the process uh, is right now, but you know, I think the better the communications we have with the county executive, um, you know, the more likely it is that we can, you know, get what the superintendent and board would like. Okay, thank you for that. Can I add something? Yes, Mr. Tantlip, I agree 100%. That was a professional courtesy by Dr. Jennifer Lynch to reach out and inform me. If she hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have had a clue until I just stumbled upon some athletic director and said, hey, by the way, we didn't get a trainer this year. Uh, so I was very appreciative of her, you know, informing me that that didn't make the final cut. Thank you. Well, we should make sure this presentation that we do as soon as the council adopts. So like in the June budget committee, we should just make sure that's an agenda item. Everyone remember great. to make sure. I wasn't sure if he was still. Mr. McMillan, were, were you still talking? Excuse me, no, I'm finished, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Tanlev. Are there any other questions? No, I, Ms. Domanowski, this is Ms. Hen. I, I yes. don't agree with Mr. Tantliff that this should be a standing agenda item when the county exec finalizes um, the budget. It still has to go to the county council for approval, but um, I think it, at one of those points, this, this should be a committee report each year. Okay. So I agree. And what is that? What did you say that? What month was that in June? Well, we can when the county, the county executive presents his budget in mid April. So we could do this report reflecting the county exec's budget at the May meeting. The council usually does not make any changes this year. They decided to cut us a half million because one of the council members felt like doing that. Uh, but usually it's the same. So we could make the presentation in May. And then if the council does make any changes um, in late May, when they vote in June, we could just let you know, because it's likely to be nothing what those changes are. So May we could do it versus the county exec's proposal. Ms. Domanowski, I have one more question, sure. if I may. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tantliff, do do we have an opportunity um, before the county exec announces the budget to provide any last minute feedback? If, if there needed, if there needs to be cuts, you know, in one area versus another, can the board provide input into those priorities or at that point has the train left the station and it's it's too late or are those conversations happening with the superintendent? <clears throat> um. I'd say yes, there's, you know, the best way would be to funnel the feedback through the superintendent. Um, that would probably be the most orderly process, but I think the county executive is and his staff are legitimately going
going through the proposals. Remember, it's not just us. It's the whole rest of the county and how much money do they have and how much does everyone need. Um, and I think between really the month of March, because, you know, usually vote the very end of February, we get them the budget by March 1st. And then it's really March, primarily the first two th to three weeks of March, where they're really muscling through things, asking more questions. They're asking some going in because they see the superintendent's proposal. But if there's communication uh, that you feel would be good for the CE to know, I don't know the exact appropriate best way for you to get a message to him, but I think going through the superintendent, as I mentioned, would probably be the most orderly path. Thank you. I, I think in terms of timing, and, and we can discuss this at another meeting, I don't want to belabor it, but um, I think there's an opportunity for this committee to take a recommendation to the full board um, if need be, if there are any amendments we'd like to provide input on, because like Ms. Dominowski said, once the board approves the request, we don't see it again until it's final and the council can only subtract, they can't add to it. So we don't have the opportunity to work with our counterparts on the council to make any changes either. So I think it would be helpful if we could preview um, the county exec's budget and have one last pass. At, if, if there's anything major that we need to provide feedback on, that would be helpful. And this committee could be a vehicle um, to work on that. Uh, Ms. Hen, if I may just give one uh, response to part of what you said. There's no way to see the CE's budget. He's not going to release that until the day he releases it to the public. We might get some general feedback before, but you would not have an opportunity to view his decisions. What we would have an opportunity to do is um, get feedback to them both you know, uh, Mr. Hartlove and I can go through the finance team, which is very influential to make sure they understand our position. And then, you know, if you're giving feedback to the superintendent, um, you know, I'm sure she would have the opportunity to also fight for initiatives uh, that we think are uh, critical. And usually during that process, we might get feedback on what the CE is cutting, um, you know, through the the budget organization, our back and forth. We have, you know, a great relationship with the fiscal organization over there. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to clarify because you said you wanted to respond to his budget. You would not have an opportunity. You would only have an opportunity to to um, support what the board voted on. Thank you. And one thing that he has asked the board to do, and I don't know if this is in the works or not. Um, but other departments within county government submit tiered requests. Mm -hmm. um, it would be helpful for this committee and the board to know if that's something that we should be working on so that when we make our request, he has that that input and the fine, you know, the finance team has that input up front that as they're making those decisions, they understand what the board's priorities are. Well, and that system, if it's not tier one, it's probably getting cut. So once you say it's not as important, it's tier two and three, you can probably kiss it goodbye. But we je we've, we've had a little of that, but generally they kind of handle us a little differently. I know exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, the other office departments have templates and targets and they have to stack things that way, but they treat, they handle us a little differently. That's not to say we can't convey to him what is the most urgent thing. Sure, a former board member in one year made even made that in a motion that communications would include um, compensation, for instance, as the board's number one priority. And I think that that message was received and received well, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tomanowski. Sure, thank you for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Tantleff. Um, 
since we already kind of have been talking, started talking about the transparency, I, I don't see Ms. Brooker Dreyer in here yet. So um, how do we feel about talk, uh, moving on to discussing potential strategies to improve budget transparency? Um, we have the two that we've just talked about, about um, the ESSER funds sunsetting and posting something like this quarterly that was just presented by Mr. Tantliff about the budget and how we're spending our money and how, you know, yes. So uh, does anybody want to go first? Have any ideas? Other ideas? I, I have an idea. I'll I'll float out if that's OK. Yes, feel free to speak out. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, at one point, I, I recall mention of there being a, a dashboard being developed um, for the budget, similar to we have our facilities dashboard, data dashboard, our school's data dashboard. Um, is that still a project that is in our portfolio? And maybe Mr. Tantliff could speak to that or something that, that we could consider. Um, the dashboards are so helpful. I think if we had the equivalent an interactive dashboard on our, on our website um, that the public can manipulate, have access to our spend data, um, even if it's a year in arrears versus real time, that would be incredibly helpful and move us um, a mile towards transparency, greater transparency. Um, that is not a project we're working on right now. Um, what it would encompass and could it be a project uh, I would couldn't answer that right now, uh, but I will mention that the superintendent uh, has uh, directed that we, um, you know, the communications team and the fiscal team um, put out um, what's what she's calling a budget 101 uh, sort of sister website to our budget landing page that kind of explains the details of how the budget is built and what's behind the curtain. Uh, it's not our detailed spend data that you're referring to though. Okay. Do, do we have resources that could potentially um, help us with the historic spend data? In other words, those, or was that um, contracted out? Do you know? This may be a question for um, Mr. Augusto, but is was what contracted out? I'm sorry, the the the, the development of the other data dashboards. Do you know? Uh, I, I no, I don't know. I'm assuming we contracted it out, but but I don't know. I'm sure anything's doable with time and resources. It's just uh, getting them, and uh, as you know, we're about to jump into an ERP implementation that'll take kind of every IT resource that's available. That's not to say it's not important or couldn't be done, um, but I just couldn't answer that question right now, what it would take, how much it would cost, how we, you know, we'd have to scope it out and determine what needed to be in it. Um, Chris, did you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I agree with what you're, what you're saying. Um, and I don't know what the other dashboards, how they were developed. So it really is a, uh, uh, I think you're uh, correct, Ms. Hen. It's a, uh, it's Mr. Augusto, uh, his territory. He would be best equipped to answer that. Okay, thank you both. Um, Ms. Domanowski, I'd, I'd like to make a motion around this um, to sure. move us um, a, this further um, yeah. for an exploratory sense. And that is to, for this committee, to ask that a subcommittee be formed, including representation from the budget committee, and that the superintendent provide staff support to that subcommittee to um, begin discussing the scope of what a budget data dashboard would include, and um, with the goal of identifying resources, identifying costs to inform the next budget um, so that this is a project that we can request funding for um, in the next budget. So that's is my question. Do, do I need to get, ask for a motion to move the? Is there a sec I guess I'll second that. 
so we can t discuss the motion. Sure. Um, I'm gonna put. Will you? Yeah. Will you put that in the in the chat too, please? Sure. Um, did you want to speak to your motion or do you want to type it first? Um, I'll type it first, but I think Mr. McMillian had something he, yeah, he wanted. Yeah, so Mr. McMillian. No, I was just second that if 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 you had Ms. Demanowski. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing I wanted to add on to that before you were going to make that motion, I feel like the stuff that we're kind of asking for to be made public is stuff that you're already you know generating for budgetary purposes and just making those more available to our uh, like even if it's not a real in time moving document just like a saved document that you can post like and put the date updated the, on this date just like you do in board docs but make it easier for um you know for our for the public to find so it doesn't feel like we're and i know we're not but it doesn't feel like we're trying to hide it um so it's just more accessible these kinds of you know reports about you know, whether it's quarterly or I don't feel like it. I'm not asking. We're not asking you to do extra work. It's just making that these kinds of things easier for our um, our public to find. Um, Ms. Dominowski. Uh, yeah. I, and I was just thinking as as the discussion was going on, um, we we may want to um, see what's included in the superintendent's uh, budget 101 site because I think she's. I, I we've just been talking about the discussion, you know, about what's going to be included and we've we've begun working on it, but I think she's taught, you know, she's she's aiming for something, you know, within the next month or so to have out there. You, you know, you may want to hold. And, and see, I, yeah, yeah. And see I was that, thinking that I ahead. remember her saying something about that, too, about, um, you know, wanting to make the put the budget online and make it more transparent. I do remember that being part of of her you know goals and I, I was going to include her in that email and ask um and I, I if we can still write this motion up and I can present it uh, as that way and I'll give her a chance to respond before we actually bring it to the board so maybe it's already in the in the works if that makes sense but um it, just from the way that Mr. Tanloff was saying it it sounds more like the budget 101 and I again we could be wrong and I, I should ask I need to follow up with her um, but it just sounds more of like a informative, like this is how you put a budget together. This is what we concentrate on. Not so much as, you know, the actual numbers, what we're spending, what we're spending it on. This is what we said we were going to spend it on. This is the budget we approved. This is what we actually got. This is what we're actually spending it on. Do you know what I mean? Like all the, like, it, it, and I, again, could be wrong, but um, I will, I will ask her first and um, let her, but I think this is something that, um, I'm hoping, or even if it's just a motion to add it to that budget 101 website. Right, and if I may respond, Ms. Domenowski, yeah. I, I think until um, we discuss our vision and requirements for the interactive data dashboard, um, well, I think we need to have that discussion first to yeah. inform conversation about whether the budget 101 site will meet the same um, goals for that. And we yeah, might be able to provide input in, into that and it, it may be a, a single solution, but until we have that, that discussion, I, I think we still need to form a, a working group. Yeah. To That's move this. Good. OK, would you like me to read my motion? Yes. Again, OK, thank you. I move that the budget committee form a subcommittee for the purpose of gathering requirements and costs for the development of an interactive budget data dashboard and to request that the superintendent provide staff support for the subcommittee. So move, Dominowski. Do we need a second? So you, I'm, I motion, do you second? You were the second, Ms. Yeah. Domino? Well, okay. If, yeah. Well, I don't, I, I move. Don't we have well, to I move and then second or does it, do you not have to within in a committee or does it not? Um, I made I'll the motion second. and you seconded or Mr. McMillian. Yeah, it was all. And we have a quorum so we can vote on it, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Faye, will you call the vote, please? Yes. Ms. Domnowski? Yes. 
Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. Motion has passed and we will, um, I will, I will bring this before the, in an email before the board meeting so that we're aware too, but, um, and get some feedback, but thank you for that. And this is a, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Did we get Ms. Bokadryer yet? Nope. Okay. Any other comments, questions, ideas on uh, how to make the budget process more transparent? Hearing none. Okay, let's go to, all right, we're going to go back. I think this has to tie in with the purpose of the budget committee too. Um, we'll do agenda items last. So if we could pull up the draft of the purpose. Ms. Mayor, please. I'm sorry, hold on one second. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Can you see the screen? Yes. OK, has everyone had a chance to read over this? Uh, Mr. Ramillion? Yes. Do you have you had a chance to read over this? Do you want me to read it I, out loud? I'm not sure the document because I'm on the phone. OK, how about I read? Do you want me to read it? Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure. Or Ms. Hen, would you like to read it? Um, I, either way, Ms. Demonowski, if you'd you like to. You go for it. it. You do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the vision reads to responsibly allocate board resources in alignment with established board goals and objectives and in a fiscally sound manner for the maximum benefit of all students. The mission of the committee to lead a strategic, inclusive, efficient and transparent year round budgeting process through open communication and collaboration between the board, the superintendent, staff and stakeholders. Um, goals number one, ensure that the proposed budget developed in collaboration by the board and superintendent aligns with the board's vision, mission, goals and fiscal priorities. Two, recommend new policies and changes to existing policies regarding operating and capital budgets. Three, include stakeholders in key fiscal decision making. And four, promote efficiency in the board's budget adoption process. And then there are action items um, related to these, some of which the committee has completed um, and some which are ongoing. So would you like me to read those as well? And, uh, I get it from what you read and I think it's a wonderful document. Thank you, sir. I agree. Thank you very much. Uh, does it? Does anyone have anything they would like to add? Mr. Domenowski, I would add um, to the list of um, stakeholders in the mission um, yes. county government. So that it would read to lead a strategic, inclusive, efficient and transparent year round budgeting process through open communication and collaboration between the board, the superintendent, Count Baltimore County government staff and stakeholders. I think our discussion here today um, reiterated the importance of working with our funding partners. Good. That's a good app. Yes, I agree. Anybody else have any comments? Questions? Okay. Hearing none, I will work on that and um, add that Baltimore County government to. Do we need, I guess, I mean, this has technically already been voted on, correct? It was already, this is already like in our, do we need to add any more action items? Do you feel, does anyone, that's, an, that's another thing that we should talk about. We may want to add the 
data dashboard, but we could probably hold off on that until we have the initial meetings with the superintendent to discuss the scope. Um, okay. Mr. Obanowski, can I say something? Yes, you can. Mr. Tant left earlier in the meeting when I left. I wasn't, you know, my intent was not to be disrespectful or rude to you. I was laughing at my behavior because I know at times, you know, I, I can be demanding and loud and, and obnoxious. And so when you talked about responding to me, I sometimes I wouldn't want to respond to me myself. So. So I wasn't being rude, so I hope you didn't interpret that that way. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's nothing I gave a second thought to. No offense taken. Thank you. I think we share this action item to put Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Tantliff in a bubble and <laughs> protect them because they're such incredibly helpful resources and I appreciate their support of our our committee. I would agree. Um, you guys are great and I know we asked a lot of questions. Thank, so thank you so much um, for all that you do. We. Um, so I'm going to hold on to this, make the you know additions and then put that together in the same, you know, up, updating. Uh, Ms. Litcher on what the budget committee is doing. I kind of want to get on to the next agenda item if we don't have anything else here, which no. would be setting. Do we need, I'm sorry. Do we need a motion to um, reaffirm? I guess, except we just and just to add in the the county government. Sure, and we can okay. say as amended. Okay. So. Do I have a motion to reaffirm the Board of Education Baltimore County Budget Committee vision, mission, goals, action items as amended to include uh, Baltimore County government? So moved. A second, should we just? Yeah, is there I'll a second? Okay. <laughs> Ms. Say, will you call the vote, please? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you very much for all your work there, Ms. Hen and Mr. Tantliff and Mr. Hartloff. Did I, I always feel like I, I mixed you guys' names together, but I didn't that time. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Um, tart no. love. Tart love, yes. <laughs> if, I, I, if I say that, tart please love. call me out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> tart love. It's hard. Tart, tant love, tart love. I, I don't know why I want to mix those. I'm terrible. Terrible with names. I did not get my father's charisma when it comes to remembering everybody's names and faces. He was always good at that. OK, so um, now that we're done with that, let's move on to future agenda items. Uh, one second. Uh, sorry. Okay. Committee would like to discuss potential agenda items for our future meetings in 2023-24. Does anyone have anything they would like to bring before the committee for a future agenda item? I have a couple, but uh, if Mr. McMillian has anything, I'll I'll defer to him Go first. Ms. Hen, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. <laughs> OK, um, one Mr. McMillian might be able to speak on um, as it was discussed at the audit committee meeting recently, I believe, and that is the zero based budgeting process. I would love um, for this committee to receive an update on that about how the process is going and um, how that's going to work for the next budget. And my second item is for the board to receive an update on the state's initiative to publish LEA um, spend data in 
a centralized um, or on a centralized website, whether that project is still underway and BCPS's participation in that. Written those down at some. Mr. McMillan, do you have anything? No, not really, but I know Miss Booker Dreyer does. That's I know. something that I know. she and I think she had some good ideas on that. And also, I'm very comfortable with the, the committee chair and Mr. Tantliff to and, and Mr. Hartlove to sit down and you know when they when you guys construct that agenda, I'm very comfortable with the topics that you choose to share with us also. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, since Ms. Uh, Booker Dwyer is not here, we certainly can, you know, entertain these through via email, and yes. then we take everything we hear and then give it back to you in a in a proposed agenda, and then you can, we could vote on it at the next meeting. That sounds good. Um, yes, I. I I need to be better at organizing that for you and put that into a schedule and and send that out and that will be on my to do list to get those. She did send a bunch um, in an email. I still have it and I will look at our future meetings and see where we can work everything out and we can all agree uh, on it. And if you guys think of something else, please add it to that. Um, sure. Oh, I, I mean, have, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm going to ask you didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go right ahead. Um, the I had one other item, and that is I, I would like to receive a presentation on the County Office of Legislative Audit's budget recommendations um, for BCPS. That's a report that they produce every year um, for the County Council before the Council votes on the overall county budget. They do one for each department and agency, um, including BCPS, and it always has um, some really great recommendations in it. So I would like the committee to receive a report on it and um, periodic updates as far as if we are implementing any of the recommenda recommendations um, from the audit office. If that's something we can receive. I'm taking notes on all these, but if you want to, you know, put in, in your words and better words than I will be able to do, I'm sure then please feel free to send that to me in writing so I can officially sure. put it in the nice way that you just said it. Because <laughs> that, uh, that report is available on the county website. It is available it, on the county. Mm -hmm. And, and um, one, uh, one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. I just wanted to mention for Ms. Dominowski, just uh, something to keep on what you just said earlier. earlier. The earlier that you make a request uh, to put something on the agenda, especially if it takes some data gathering, the better chance we can get it done by then. So, you know, having at least a couple weeks uh, heads up makes it uh, easier for us to get what you'd like. If it ends up being a few days ahead of time, it might need to be deferred to the next meeting. Just something to keep in mind. Yes. Thank you. I, I will keep that in mind. Sorry, I know I'm a last minute person. I need to work on that. <laughs> yeah, and, and one other thing in that same vein, I know we're supposed to have things posted to the website. I, I and I've been, you know, probably not on top of that as well. But so Mr. What Mr. Tantliff is saying is correct. We got to get it prepared and then we also should really have it posted out to the website probably a week before the meeting. So that's another that's another item that we should really be trying to trying to do. Yes, that'd be great. OK. Well. In the absence, I have not heard back from Ms. Booker Dreyer since about a little bit before five, so I'm assuming her meeting went pretty long. I will work on this. Everything that we've discussed tonight. Um, the motions we've made the get it all um, written up officially in some document so that I can get this to her 
and include everybody in it also so that if we have any more thoughts on it what we want to present it will all be there in writing and nothing you know you can hear what i want i would would like basically what i'm saying is i would like to get her input on before we finalize anything completely um as far as agenda setting transparency anything we want to add ask for present to Ms. Uh, the superintendent and the board. So if anybody has any questions about that or comment or if we're okay with that. Okay with me. Sounds good. All right. Well, that is good then. Um, there are no further questions or comments for this evening. I need to go back to my paper. Sorry. Hearing none. Um, I know I'm supposed to. Da, 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 da. Oh, the last item of the agenda is announcements, and that is for our next budget committee meeting, which will be Wednesday, October 18th at 530. Also virtual. Um, I will get you guys agenda items at least a week in advance, if not sooner. M most likely sooner. Um, but if there's no further business, hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned and I thank all of you for joining us and for all of your insights and I appreciate everyone for being here tonight. Thank you very much.